How you doing, Gig? Hey, I'm doing great, Jeremy. How, how's it going with you? You know, like everybody else, I'm just, uh, you know, inventing and imagining and trying to, uh, to find the positive in this tumultuous time. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you know what? What's positive is that you're speaking about this film at, at the, you know, very last minute for still here. So you are very dedicated to this project. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we started shooting five years ago. And I actually think we were shooting, it was maybe July. So it was over five years ago. We did a few, a few um, scenes. We shot a few scenes last, like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And so we've been working on it a long time. And I'm just, I, it was killing me that I thought maybe no one would see the film because I knew, I knew Vlad was getting good stuff. I knew the script was good. I knew that he, he's like a storytelling acrobat, you know, things would, would shift. But I knew he knew the heart of the story and it was, it was breaking my heart that no one was seeing. And I'm so glad that people are going to get to see it now. So five years ago, what drew you specifically to a project like Still Here? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's very an emotional film. It is. Uh, the script is very compelling. And, you know, though it's so compelling today, what's disheartening is that the world hasn't, I, I think actually the world's gotten worse. Uh, when we shot this film, yeah, there were, there were black people who were getting murdered by police officers. There were police officers getting murdered by black people. I mean, but what's happening now is, and maybe it's just because now we are admitting it, you know, the ugliness is there for all to see. And I think there's a real opportunity for things to change for the better. Um, we have a chance you know, we, white dudes like me, we have a chance to really look in the mirror and ask how we can do better um, personally, professionally, uh, artistically. And I really think this film, I mean, it's just a human story, right? It's so beautiful, the love in this film. And I think that's what really attracted me to it, just as a story, but also morally, I was attracted to it for that reason. What, what do you think about the timing of this film? Because the, you made the movie started five years ago, but the timing with, with all the news cycles and, and so on, I mean, that, uh, it's, it's just a pure coincidence. It really is. And the, the most interesting piece of it to me is the news piece, right? Five years ago, we weren't, say, we weren't talking about fake news. Like, it wasn't really in the zeitgeist. And so now you see this, this character who's a reporter and he's really looking inside himself and seeing if, if, if that's him, if, he's, if what he's doing is authentic and he discovers um, a more authentic way of being. Uh, and I think that's beautiful. Talk, talk about your character, the police officer, Greg Spaulding. Um, I mean, he's, in, in a way, he's controversial because he's white perhaps racist and so on did that was it tough to play that character and especially now thinking back was it is it tough for you today well i'll tell you this um i screened the film only a few short days ago with my wife and she looked over at me she said i have a pit in my stomach i had i had forgotten how ugly the, the dark side of Greg Spaulding was. It wasn't f fun to do it, but it was, there was a, I did savor the, the, the challenge of doing it. I have a, a good many friends who are New York City cops. I'm friends with one guy who's a, who's a homicide detective in Midtown, or at least he used to be. And, um, and I have another pretty good friend who's, um, who's a narcotics detective. So I would talk to them, especially my friend Bobby, a lot about being on the job and the dark humor they have and you know a lot of it's just a way for them to get through the ugliness of their job because they're dealing with such a uh, a volume of human tragedy and darkness that without that humor and without that, 
that tough skin, that armor, they, they wouldn't be able to, to get through it. And a lot of them, there's alcoholism, divorce, post-traumatic stress. Um, and so that armor and racism is, um, is part of, unfortunately, the, the job for many of them. I'm not calling all cops racist, but I am saying that it's really difficult. Um, it's dehumanizing in a way. And I think we really need to take a serious look at that from a, from a police education standpoint. Um, the story was compelling to me because it's just, it was so well written and um, it's actually based on a story that happened in Romania. And uh, it's a really heartbreaking um, you know, thing that happens to a lot of children, they go missing and it's, it's terrible. I, I, I love your answers because you, you, you make, you have this like understanding of what black lives are going through. And yet you also have like understanding what cops are going through. And that, and that's, that's a, that's a terrific balancing act uh, that, that you do. Well, you know, gig, I, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think I understand what, you know, what black people are really going through. I, I can try to imagine what it would be like if I knew my daughter would be followed around in a store. Um, I can imagine it, uh, but it's different to, to live that reality and to be held back by things you, you can't even see. And now, you know, maybe more of us will realize that that's their reality. You know, I live in a small town in Vermont and we're dealing with that issue here with our police force. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've talked to our chief of police. I've invited him to the black lives matters events and he, he doesn't want to come. And, and, uh, it's very disheartening, but I, I believe in my heart, I believe that if we keep fighting and keep the pressure on, we can actually, change things for the better absolutely talk about uh, your your on-screen partner uh danny johnson i believe that uh how um how was delightful to um basically interact oh. and play against him i love danny johnson that man is i first of all if you're just sitting down having coffee with him and all you have to do is just listen to his voice he's got the most beautiful voice in the world He's also really super funny, um, and he's he's a, a real crass person, and uh, he's amazing to watch on set. He's so good, man. He's good. I I just watch him, and sometimes I'd be in the take with him, and I you know I just get lost in what he was doing because he's so um, potent. You know that voice is so potent. Um, we had a great time. We got to do some uh, some you know, some ad lib scenes together, which was one of, one of which made it into the film. And um, it's one of my favorite scenes because it's a little lighter. And uh, I loved working with him. I hope we get to do something again sometime. He's a good friend of mine. And um, he, uh, he's a COVID survivor, man. He had it early on and, and thank God he's, he's okay. Um, he's fantastic. Yeah, it's uh, COVID. COVID is sure uh, a strange thing because because I, I I had mine back in March myself. So oh, God bless you! I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, it's a, it. I I don't recommend it to anybody. I was hospitalized yeah. for six days myself. Oh my so it's, God, gig! It's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> How are you now? Oh, I'm I'm fine. It's this is you know four four months later, but you know nothing I, lingering. Uh I, I've always had a little bit of health problems due to diabetes, so so that's oh, yeah. that, that, that's actually just on on my end myself. Yeah. But but I'm getting checked by doctors like every couple months myself. Good, so, good. So, but uh, but but for your but for yourself, you had such a long career for yourself, and you play so many roles through your career. You know, through movies, through television. How how do you choose your roles? I mean, you play very very interesting characters. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I got these two kids to feed. So um, really, I just, I just want to work. I just want to be on set. Um, I tell people all the time, I'm a blue collar actor. I don't, I don't really want to be famous. I'm not famous. 
I really just want to be on set and do the job. I want to work. I like being, um, I like being with the, the sound people. I like that camaraderie we have when they're, when they're, I, I always like to learn about their new pieces of equipment. Um, I love dolly grips because they all decorate their setups with like stickers and, and, you know, I just got a shirt from the do- from one of the um, camera assistants on House of Cards who made a whole parody of House of Cards while we were making House of Cards. Um, and I just got a t-shirt from him. And it's one of my most prized possessions. I love just the, the um, act of making content of the people, of the family. Um, and I can't wait to get back to it. Absolutely. Well, let me wrap it up with one one more thing. It like like we like you mentioned. You know, the, these times are tough, and, and I know it's a silly question to ask, but how are you staying sane and creative during these times as we are starting to reopen again for production? Yeah. Well, that's not a silly question. That's a great question. Um, I renovated my bathroom with my wife, so that was we did that together. That was fun. I built some planter boxes. I live in Vermont, so we did a, I did a lot of work outside. Um, I, uh, I've written, I'm developing a TV show with my friend Chris Kelly, a sci-fi thriller, which is going to be fantastic. Um, and I've, I've gotten to spend a lot of time with my girls. So I've really, I've used it as a blessing to be with my family because I am gone a lot. So it's nice to, you know, to be with them. Well, hey, you know what? Life, life is precious, and we, we got we got to live it and live it well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jeremy, uh, for uh, for speaking with with me, and uh, hopefully we get to do this again. Absolutely, thank you so much, Gig. Take hey, care thank, of yourself. Thank you, thank you. I Bye. will, I will. Okay. Bye now. Bye bye.